So what we're going to do first of all is I want you to prepare your mind very well. Prepare your mind for all of what God has in store for you. Like never before, we must have a sense of urgency to the word of God. But before I go into what I want to teach about, and I'll be speaking about the power of faith in healing and health. The power of faith in healing and health. That's what I'll be talking about this morning. The power of faith in healing and health, or for healing and health. You know, English is very tricky. There are some prepositions you need to put in. There are some you put for, some you put off, you know. But I think this one allows both in and off. Please, whichever is correct, please, <laughs> is your notes. <laughs> Amen. It's my message, but it's your notes. Whichever one you think is pro proper for English. All right. Let's go to see something. I wanted to try to articulate a few thoughts before we get started. But time will always be an instruction. So I'm going to go with time. Um, but before we do that, I just want to draw your attention to the fact that anytime you come into God's presence, you must understand it is your duty. It is your duty to make the most of it. Did you enjoy that brief charge this morning? No, seriously, did you enjoy that brief charge? I was refreshed. That sounded like E.W. Kenyon. That sounded like, oh my God. I, I'm telling you, can we give the Lord a round of applause and appreciate God? Uh, you see what you are doing? You know the problem? Wait first. Let me tell you something. One of the challenges we have as this ministry is that we, we, we underestimate what we have here because of our size and all of that. I want you to stop that. Because God is the one that increases size. <laughs> that message he shared is a world-class teaching. I'm a student of God's word. Trust me. That brief charge there, I'm going to listen to it again. I'm telling you, as a student of God's word, I can tell you that was from heaven. And it is for someone. So please, let us appreciate God one more time as though we understand there are places where their doctrine is not as half as that. That was doctrine shared. Oh, I was so blessed. I was so blessed. But like I said, I want to say something before I teach the power of faith. That, you see, how it works in church work is that everybody has a gifting. Everybody has a ministry. And God will have all of us such that when it is time, are you sure this is your time you gave me is correct? Before you start your manipulation of spirits. Eh? <laughs> you know they are watching you. Check your time. I'm seeing time. I have time allotted to here. Amen. All right. There are no if it's correct, leave it to. I'm not I'm not um bullying you into changing time. <laughs> but just make sure you give me my time because I want I plan my own time too. And I want to say something. All right. So I want to say something that there are different giftings. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? And many times people think that it is just, as a pastor, I've been a pastor for years now, I can tell you. I've seen that it is not only the word of God that grows a church. No. There are churches that don't preach sound word, but they are very plenty. You know what grows a church? Community. Like-minded people. And some people don't even know Bible. But they will bring people to church and keep them in that community. What I'm trying to say is that everybody has something he can offer, including the one that does not know Bible. That's what I'm trying to say. So nobody is truly useless in God's house. Nobody. Anyone you see walking through this ministry or through this church, God has a reason for sending him here, and God has a plan that you should play in the life of that first timer. We can keep coming in here. This is not my message, Joe. Show you know I, I, I have. So this is not my message. No, we can keep coming in here and keep coming in day after day. I want us to become conscious that God will bring people through this door every Sunday. That's his job. It's our beat to ensure that our flavor into this work is contributed. There is something your face does. Can, can you look up, please? Learn to look up. It's it's good. Look up at me. It's com it shows confidence. Develop it. Look, you are not. Nobody can beat you again. You have grown too old to be beaten. Amen. So let's look up. You have come to God's house, and I want you to know that even God 
there are some things he can't do for himself in his presence. Yes. It will be you that will do it. It will be you that will sing praises to him. Do you get what I'm trying to say? A king is known by his followership. If God doesn't have followership, then he's no king. What I'm just trying to say here is that everyone has a flavor of grace that if you don't bring to the table, the intention of God will not be completed. So sometimes we think that the duty is on God. No. There is no activity of the spirit that is entirely trusted on one side. Even when you go for, I, I, I've never been there, but at least what we watch on TV, when you go for, when these people that go to Habalis or something, the man will tell you what you want to do. It is not only, he will not tell you what you will do. After telling, I have not been there, oh, amen. <laughs> but I'm just saying, if we go by what I believe we see on TV and those that have been there know what they present to us. <laughs> you know, you're talking like this, you have to be careful. People are watching your life. Praise God. But what I'm just trying to say is that you have to know that everything of life, any Christianity that absorbs you of responsibility is irresponsible. You know what I just said? Any Christianity that absorbs you of your own responsibility is irresponsible. Everything has... Getting a child, God say you are the one to make love to your wife. When you come with the child, he said the child is his own. <laughs> Do you see that? Okay, getting blessed now. He said you should go to work. But you got the money. He said he's the one that blessed you. No, I want you to see what I'm trying to say. And I'm trying to be very real with you. Every Christianity, everything in life that absorbs you of your own responsibility. When you pass an exam, you say, God, help me pass the exam. But you read. At some point, God had to tell the children of Israel, don't get deceived that because you walked, that's why you got blessed. Because sometimes your activity in it makes you feel you are the one that got it done. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Somebody has a child or you have a student. You say, ah, uh -uh, I'm, a, I'm a max man. Oh, guys, it's not by maxmanship. Oh. Somebody has a first class. He got a job. He says it's his first class that got him a job. You are illiterate. You are a very educated illiterate. What it means is that though you got the job, it was God that helped it count for something. What I'm therefore trying to say is that anything we do in this ministry, as we come here day in, day out, God is not the only one, even though I just said it now, that it is God that will cause the increase. It is not on God alone. It is not on God alone to cause an increase. It is on the choir. It's on the ushers. It's on you the first time. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? It's on me, the pastor. It's on the community we create. It's on the pastor. It's on the members. It's on the community. So God will keep doing his own part while man must keep doing it. That's why they say that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There is a way heaven wants to reflect itself on earth. Nothing just happens 100% because it is spiritual. I want to say it again. You must understand that you have a role in playing in the blessings of God for your life. Or in the blessings of God in your church. Or in the blessings of God for your family. Everything that will happen has to happen intentionally. Even when God brings it through a miracle, it must be sustained by principles. So I'm simply saying to us, find your role and fulfill it. See, after me, I will find my role. I will fulfill my role. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that must, you know, grow must be managed. We manage things to get better. Now, on that note, I want to speak in the line of what I've been talking about concerning healing and health. Praise the Lord. What time is it now? Because I'm getting confused now. What time is it now? 9.13. 9.18. How many, how many minutes am I supposed to minister? Eh? I'm supposed to preach for 15 minutes. Eh. Okay. I will not. I will just greet you people then. <laughs> because I've been preparing since last week. Eh? Where did you get 15 minutes from? I'm supposed to minister for 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. Because I'm wondering 15 minutes. I will do 15 minutes and go. That's the problem. When you give people power. It should be me that gave you power to choose my time. I will collect my power back. How, how can I be giving? Eh? Eh? I've seen another one now. 
after service, we sort out ourselves. Please edit. Or is it live? Ah, sorry. Hello. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's domestic issues, but I, I really feel we'll do our home training after now. Praise God. Let me go to my heart because I've been building this message since. You know when you say you've been cooking something since. It can't, 15 minutes can't kill it. But let me, let me deliver the much that we will and then take it to the second service. I want to bring to us today, in that spirit, since we've been talking about the subject of healing and health, one thing you will probably have noticed I have been repeating, if you are candid and fair and listening, is that there is a spiritual side to health that is 100%, and there is a natural side to healing and health that is 100%. It is never a case of 50-50. No, it is 100-100. Health, therefore, like many other blessings of God, are completely spiritual as they are completely natural. Please, did you hear what I just said? Don't think it is 50%, 50%. No, it is 100% spiritual and it is 100% natural. Say that after me. Say health and healing is 100% spiritual and it is 100% natural. The reason I say so is that they don't have to exist exclusive from themselves they can exist mutually do you get what i'm saying that it is both spiritual and natural if I've, I've i've never been to the theater where surgery is being taking place but i've been to where a woman is put into bed i've seen what they call that place labor room thank you thank you medical people there some of them will pray before they go inside and say lord we come in even the regular doctors will tell you that we care god heals uh -huh. why are they saying so because they know that there's a combination between god and that's the realm of the spirit and the realm of the natural i i know a little about the military that's the nigerian army especially i know that they pray before they go to battle they, they say this they hold their hands and they say lord we are going now thou the shepherd of soul lead us a spirit there is us and then they say guide us so that we can kill our enemies they pray because they know that it is spiritual and it is natural. They will shoot the bullet, but it is God that makes them get the aim. Do you get what I'm saying? David's sling against Goliath is 100% spiritual and 100% natural. Somebody says, ah, if David did not know how to sling it, if he, I mean, uh, if, he, if he slung it, is that the correct English? <laughs> if he slung it the wrong way, it's because David knows how to sling that he got it right. I can tell you there are many people that can get it right, but that stone will not fall a man down. Do you get what I just said? Yeah. It's not enough to hit Goliath's body. Bah! Eh? It is about the stone getting Goliath and then the power of God pushing it down. What I'm trying to therefore say to you is that there seems to be a collaboration between the realm of the spirit and the realm of the natural. See after me, say realm of the spirit and the realm of the natural. What I'm trying to do, let me tell you, is that I want you to stop seeing a demarcation between the realm of the spirit and the realm of the natural. They are, they are simultaneous. They are simultaneous. I want you to stop. What I'm doing now is spiritual. It is not partially spiritual. It is 100% spiritual, yet it is 100% natural. When you keep separating them, you will not know when to manage situations well. And that's why I want to draw your attention to because the subject of healing and health, wealth and finances, children and you know marriage are spiritual. And many times we get, get confused. That's why the Bible says my children are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Many times we just want to want, have one answer. Is it spiritual or natural? So if I can take out... No, you have to learn to handle both. Please, do you get what I'm saying here? You know we're no longer children, so we need to grow spiritually. Before now, we could be telling you, just go and pray. You will realize not only prayer will get you the salvation. Yeah. Uh -huh. you, so that's why some people say, I've prayed, I've fasted. Nothing happened. It's because they did not teach you well. You are coming to an apostle of balance. I've been answering this name from my childhood. I know the details. I know these things, sir. If you don't get the balance, you will get everything mixed up. So healing is not um, exclusively spiritual. It is mutually spiritual and natural. Simultaneously simultaneously it has a direct consequence between what you eat physically and what happens to you spiritually but it has always been so if at a physical fruit 
Hello? What happened to her was spiritual. Jesus gave us flesh and blood. What happened to us? Bread, Seth. Thank you, Mama. Bread and wine. What happened to us was spiritual. He died on the cross, maybe like this. <laughs> okay. Huh? Physical death. What happened was spiritual. So stop excluding that. Ah, that child does the this. No, 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 no. It's happening spiritual. Somebody does like this to you. Is it did natural? But that's a spiritual connotation. I get what I'm trying to say here. Now, if you don't understand these things, you will just be walking like an ignorant person. And you're not allowed to be ignorant in virtues. You're not allowed. There is a handshake. Somebody can shake you. It's a natural handshake, but it has a spiritual connotation. I can lay hands on you. The Bible says that the spirit of wisdom moved from Moses, from a place of higher concentration to a place of lower concentration. Though it was natural, but the effect was spiritual. Are you get what I'm saying here? Yes, we therefore must look, begin to look at what are the natural activities we do that have a say and an impact on our spiritual or natural experiences. So you pray spiritually and the effect shows up naturally. You take actions naturally and the effect shows up spiritually. I'm trying to show you they exist simultaneously. They exist in real time and they exist like each other is real. Just as real as this thing is, God said, let there be light. Spiritual words, light showed up physically. I want to start to see that the first thing that actually gets the connection, the nexus between spiritual and the physical are words. Write it down. The connection between the realm of the spirit and the physical are words. Words. The power of our words. The power of our words. There are many other things that we see that have very significant impacts. But I want to start this morning with the power of our words. How would you stand here and say, would you take this beautiful woman as your beloved wife? And then you say, I do. And heaven says, it is done. They call it, she's his wife. Heaven recognizes you as it. Your father took you. After thinking, you know, he watched the film. The name of the child was Jeff. Said, your name shall be called Jeff. You got born again. It was Jeff they wrote in heaven. Yes, what we are doing is simultaneously spiritual and natural. We don't become spiritual when we come to church. We are living spirits. We are natural spirits simultaneously. And the first thing that happens in the realm of the spirit is the recognition of codes. And I want to tell you about that code this morning. Words. Words are codes. Words are codes. And they have in them inherent power to create what they are sent to do. In Psalm 107 verse 20, the Spirit of God is helping me this morning. He said, he sent his word and he healed them. He didn't send a doctor. He sent words. He didn't send an ambulance. He didn't buy a pharmacy. He sent his word and he healed them. You remember the story of the children of Israel? They, they committed an atrocity and God wanted to deal with them. So snakes came up into their camp and started to bite them. You remember Exodus chapter 15? And um, Moses was concerned. And God said, okay, 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 I've heard you. Make a statue of a snake. Do you a, is it a mem? What do you call it? How do you call it? Is it image of a snake? Put it up. Anybody that can look up will be healed. Oh, oh God, what is the connection between looking up? I mean, if you will heal me, heal me. <laughs> Come on, can we talk Bible this morning? Why are you punishing us? You you send snake snake of all things to come and kill. Are we really your children? There's a reason. Then he said, anybody that wants to be healed though, please, you, you sent the snake in the first place. More so, logically speaking, the antidote should be an injection. Yes, 
look up. Second point I want to bring out. The realm of the spirit and that of its effect in the natural are always very simple. Once you complicate them, you have missed the point. Hear what I'm telling I'm telling you life this morning. And some people don't know. They want to live purely in the natural. And some get it. They want to also balance it out in the spiritual. So some people don't want to stop living in the spirit. God says, no, you can't stay too long in the spirit. Some people don't want to even go to the spirit at all. Let us pray looks like punishment. Coming to church looks like disobedience to their soul. And God says, leave them. Somebody needs to bring them to the knowledge. Because Bible says that my children are destroyed not because Satan is powerful, but because of their ignorance. He said they will continue to suffer not because Satan is powerful or that I cannot save them, but their ignorance in their action will continue to give them consequences. So, the realm of the spirit, the first contact are words. Jesus talked in John 6, 63. said, the words I speak to you, they are what? Spirit and they are life. Did you hear that? Words, they are spirit. <laughs> no, be thinking about what I'm saying now. So, a dead child lies down. And then you come. And you didn't took any injection. You only said, Kabuta Linzun Antras. Ikatabaya. Young child, arise. Words. But those words take spiritual form. Boom. Look at the dead cells. Boom. Wake cells to becoming tissues. Boom. Tissues, organs. Boom. Organ systems. Boom. Everything waking up because of words. Have you been speaking death and you never knew? The words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. He says that, one translation says, the words that I speak, they are from my spirit to your spirit to give you life. Amazing. People of God, these things are real. That's why you don't want people to be talking to you carelessly. Now, I said, number one principle is the connection between the realm of the spirit and the physical awards. Number two, if it loses its simplicity, it has been corrupted. That's why the Bible says, do not let anybody confuse you with the complexity of gospel. It says, stay with the simplicity of the gospel. Jesus, I receive into my life. Words. Father, come into my life. I, I, forgive my sins. It just, that's all. But there are codes. There are codes. That's why the Bible says that death and life, Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Everybody has tongue. They remain simple and very abundant. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you coming alive this morning, please? Yes, we are talking about healing and health. And I'm speaking about the power of faith for healing and health. Our words, they are potent. First connection. Number two, I said they remain simple. Number three, they must be spoken. If you don't speak life, you will not see life. Every power of the spirit is word activated. I want to share something on number four, but you have to understand number three. If you don't say in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. There is no healing, no. You don't think healing. You don't transmit healing by proximity. You transmit power by words. Every realm of the spirit, every, when I say every, I mean including cultic, any realm. If you don't talk, it doesn't work. That tells me that a closed mouth is a closed destiny. I don't like talking. It's a lie. Oh. Let us start it. 
because that's what your mouth is for. Your mouth is not for feeding. It is for talking. It is the talking that will determine what you feed. I want to die. I want to die. You will soon die. God forbid you will not die in Jesus' name. Oh. I want to live. I want to live. You will be living. I want to be rich. I want to be rich. You will be rich. It is what you say you will see. If you don't say it, you will never see it. Are you hear I'm ready to say here? Even if it comes to you in a form that you are not prepared for, it has to rearrange itself. Number four. Oh, number what? Is that four or five? Four. Thoughts. Actions. And words. Weigh the same in the realm of the spirit. Thoughts. Actions. And words. I know what I'm saying. And maybe I need to organize a conference where I can teach many things. I know it too well, eh? I know it like my name. I know what I'm telling you. I can beat my head with it. You know what I say? What I'm telling you is absolute. It's not partial, absolute. Anybody in the spirit realm knows what I'm saying. Anybody that hears this thing can recognize it. Thoughts, words, I mean actions and words are the same in the spirit realm. But to become manifested in the physical, it was words that must be spoken. But they all weigh the same in the spirit realm. That was why Jesus Christ said, if you look at a woman lustfully, you have already committed the atrocity. Thoughts. So be careful what you think. Because it's, it's recognized in the spirit realm. Proverbs chapter 4. Guard your heart with all diligence. It is from it flows the issues of your life. Are we blessed this morning? Now, I want you to please consider that imagine a child that is growing and all he has been hearing is failure. You know, in church as we are seated, we all come from different backgrounds. Some backgrounds, they were just taught, taught to be calm, sit down like a lady, don't shout. You know? You understand? You now come to a church like this. What's the people are noise makers? Do you know what I'm saying here? You, in your mind, you'll be like, what is wrong with these people? I want to tell you something. That it is better to make noise on this earth and leave than to be quiet and suffer. If it was even daima, it's better. It's suffer first before death. The Bible says, Oh death, where is your sting? You know that scripture? First Corinthians 15. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh sin, where is your sting? You have lost your power. <coughs> Excuse me. What that means is that death has a sting. What comes to your mind as a sting? When you think about something that stings. Scorpion. What else? B. Am I correct? Snakes. The sting is not the animal or the insect. It is its deposit. Am I correct, please? Let's, can, we, can we talk Bible here? Please, if you are feeling what I'm saying, can I hear your amen, please? Yeah. The sting of death is gone, the Bible says. Remember? The sting of death is gone. So, Death has a sting. Death has it. So it can be thinking of death like a scorpion. It can drop a sting and still be alive. That it dropped a sting does not mean it's dead. It's going to produce another one to sting somewhere else, sting as many people as it can. Now hear this. The sting of death is sickness. Once you see sickness in a body, it has come to lead you to death. You know, sting is for death. Are you there, please? Yes, sir. You don't say, thank you. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? He's saying we have lost, it has lost its power. Now, watch this. 
death goes around and the Bible says that the last enemy to be destroyed is death. So death still is playing around town. A lot. And if you, if you are spiritual or you choose to be sensitive, just even from the solical realm, not even spiritual, if you go to the hospital, you will smell the smell of death. It has a smell. You know, I was telling about smells some time back. It has a smell. Death has a smell. When you smell a dead body, you know th this is death. Oh, Jesus. Am I talking something? You will know that this is a cadaver. They have smell. What I'm trying to bring, let me stay on point, is that death is looking for who to sting. And the sting of death is sickness in the physical realm, but sin in the spiritual realm. Do you understand? So when sin is present, it can deteriorate to sickness and ultimately lead to death. Jesus was talking. He said, go and sin no more. Lest a worse sickness, do you remember that he said so, will come upon you. Why? Because it is sin that allows sickness. From the spirit realm, it is sin. Now, when we say sin, somebody is thinking that. When we say sin, somebody is thinking about, you know, atrocities. I want to tell you some things that when we say sin, we're not only talking about maybe fornication, eh, adultery, which other one again, fighting, and, you know. <laughs> sin simply means misbehavior or mistreatment of a thing or a person. Missing the mark. Let me stay on point. Hamarshia. Now, what I'm trying to bring out is that there are certain things that you do to your body, this body, that is maltreating the body. Hello? For example, running this body without resting, you are sinning against that body. Running this body, this body, without um, food, you are sinning against the body. Do you know that there is food you can eat that is good for you, but not good for your brother from the same mother and same father. Your brother takes this combination, yam and egg. He can't stand it. His system can't tolerate it. Someone else takes yam and egg and he's saying, can I have more? And he's grateful. Am I making some sense? That means that every individual has what we call health codes health codes there is a code of health for you that is not good for him now we started with the realm of the spirit being words simplicity third thing was what who can remember thoughts actions and number four is what thoughts actions and words they were the same so the next one now eh what they are spoken. When, when words are, if every power of the spirit is word activated. Number, I think I should be on number five now. Yes, I should be on number five. Number five now, I want to tell you, is every individual has a health code he must discover. Now, the reason I'm saying so is because not every sickness is caused because of the devil. Did you hear what I just said? It is unfair to say so. It is unfair to say so. Some sicknesses are caused because you think your system can tolerate bad water. You are drinking death and you think it doesn't matter. When the Bible says when they drink any deadly thing, he's not saying that's what they will be doing every day. He's saying if they mistakenly drink bad, it's just like that guy that went to the lion's den in UI Zoo. And said he's the new Daniel. The way the lion ate him. Eh? You are acting ignorant when you don't know there are codes to your life. There are codes. There are certain things you don't do. Hello. And as we grow in the realm of the spirit and as we grow older in life, God expects you to know them. <clears throat> your friend is drinking alcohol, you are drinking alcohol. When your head can't even start stand sprite. 
Say, I'm a man, I'm a man. Oh, God. <laughs> eh? A <laughs> feeling. What is a man? It's not by size. You can see some people, they will take the pot, nothing will shake. Some people eat a bar at 12 midnight and they are fine. They can go from there to concerts. Some will take small, they will blow up like this. Some they eat like tree. And nothing happens. You won't even they will say they need more. You their stomach flat. Some people, some of us, we can't even try it. If you eat small, like wah, it will look like you've eaten your world. Am I making some sense? It is called a health code. Your body is telling you you don't know your code. Just like there are financial codes. There are some businesses you should not do. You know why? Because businesses are sustained by wisdom. But you lack that wisdom to sustain that business. Are you getting what I'm saying here? You don't sustain business because you invested. You sustain business by wisdom. There's a time to withdraw from that business. There's a time to inject funds. It takes an intelligence to know what to do. Some of us know that there's this trending thing of FX, FX, FX. It's not false. So some people are thinning out with FX. But it's that some of us lack the wisdom to stay there or to withdraw. You think every investment will stay? No. Spiritual forces also affect wealth. That's not for today. I will stop here today. That there is such a thing called health codes. Somebody say after me say health codes. And finally, ah, time is gone. Finally, I will stop here. Is that everything is hinged on the principle of faith. Everything I've said is hinged on the principle of faith. Everything I've said. In other words, believing <clears throat> excuse me, is the road to receiving. As Christians, we don't visit faith. We live by faith. Your faith is not like a t-shirt you wear when you want to play football. Ah, it's time for sickness now. Ah, where's my faith? <laughs> That's, you, it won't work. Your faith is not like a chemist shop. You say, give me that one, give me this one. No. It's a total package. Are you with me this morning? You must understand that we live by faith. We talk by faith. Therefore, if you are not building your faith, you are destroying your faith. There is no middle ground. What is not going forward in the realm of the spirit is going backwards. If you are not growing in the realm of the spirit, you are dying in the realm of the spirit. <clears throat> there is no stagnancy. There is no, there's nothing like my spiritual state has been stuck. We've been like this for so long. No, you are stagnant. Everything, listen to me. Nothing stays stagnant. Nature abhors vacuum like it abhors stagnancy. You are either going up or coming down. The moment you stop doing what you ought to do, you start seeing what you should not see. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed this morning? Yes, sir. Can I stop here for now? Yes, I will continue in the second service. Let us pray. Bow your heads and talk to God and say, Father, help me understand more. Now, I know you understand a little of what I'm saying, but you need to